Chapter One: Monkey and the Young Monk. Our story begins long ago, on the mountain of fruit and flowers in China. On this mountain, there was an old rock. It was red from many years in the hot sun. One morning, the rock broke open, and a monkey was born from it. The monkey quickly learned to run fast and to fight well. Soon, all the monkeys on the mountain came to him. You're very strong. <laughs> They cried. That's true, answered Monkey. You're the strongest of us. So you must be our king. <laughs> The monkey said. All right, said Monkey. After some years, Monkey heard stories about a holy man far away. That man teaches many interesting things. Thought monkey, I must learn from him, and be the strongest king of all. So monkey left the mountain and went to the holy man's home. Monkey was a good student. First, he learned to move quickly through the sky on a white cloud. Then he learned to take out some of his hairs, say magic words over them, and make hundreds of little monkeys. <laughs> Last of all, he learned to change into different animals. After a long time, Monkey thanked the holy man and left. He got on his cloud and went back to the mountain of fruit and flowers. He soon met one of the monkeys there. Remember me," said Monkey. "I'm your king. But a red demon is now our king," said the monkey. "Ha! I can soon stop that," cried Monkey. He took out some of his hairs and said magic words over them. They changed into hundreds of little monkeys. At once, these little monkeys went up the mountain and fought the red demon. The demon ran away. This time, there was one demon," said Monkey. But what can I do next time when more demons come? I know," said one old monkey. "Go to the Dragon King of the Ocean in the East and speak to him. He knows everything about fighting demons." So Monkey got on his cloud, went to the ocean in the east, and spoke to the Dragon King. The Dragon King knew of Monkey, and was afraid of him. So he helped him. You need these," said the Dragon King, and he gave Monkey some armor and a very long staff. "I can't carry that staff!" cried Monkey. "Yes, you can. Watch this," said the Dragon King. And he cried. Change. Suddenly, the staff was very little. <laughs> Thank you. You're right. I can carry it behind my ear," said Monkey. 
and he put the little staff behind his ear and went home. Far up in the sky, the Emperor of Heaven looked down through the clouds. Hmm. We need to watch carefully, he said to the Moon Goddess. Monkey can do many different things now. So the Emperor asked Monkey up to heaven. You can work here with my horses, the Emperor told Monkey when he arrived. Thank you, said Monkey happily. But one day, the Dragon Prince of Heaven spoke to his brother, and Monkey heard them. <laughs> Monkey is doing the dirtiest work in heaven, <laughs> laughed the Dragon Prince. He never stops taking horse muck to the Emperor's gardens, <laughs> <sighs> thought Monkey angrily. He ran to the Emperor of Heaven's home. All the most important people in Heaven were there. Why am I doing the worst work in Heaven? Asked Monkey in front of everybody. Who is this? Asked the big fat Admiral of Heaven. Yes, go back to the horses at once. Said the tall, thin General of Heaven. But Monkey stood angrily in front of the Emperor and didn't move. Please find some more interesting work for Monkey, smiled the Moon Goddess. She felt sorry for Monkey. In the end, the Emperor told Monkey, Very well. Go and work in my peach garden. But you need to watch the peaches there carefully. Nobody must eat them. Because after people eat those peaches, they're immortal. So Monkey went to the peach garden. He sat under one of the trees and slept in the warm sun. When he opened his eyes, he felt hungry. Mm, I'd like one of those nice peaches, he thought, and he took a big peach from the tree and ate it. Mm. Ah, that was wonderful, he said. So he took one more. Soon. There was only one last peach in the garden. Monkey, come here! cried the Emperor the next morning. Did you eat my peaches yesterday? Yes, said Monkey. They were very nice, thank you. And now I'm immortal. Oh no! No! cried the Emperor. What can I do with him? he asked everybody. Put him in your oven, said the Admiral of Heaven. And leave him there for 49 days. Yes, said the General of Heaven. Nobody can come out of that alive. So the Emperor put Monkey in the oven at once. After 49 days, the Emperor opened the oven doors. Monkey is dead by now, I think, he said. But Monkey quickly came out. He now had red eyes and a very strong body. Ha ha! I'm immortal. You forgot that, said Monkey. And I've got new eyes. I can see demons with them. Look! There are some demons on that mountain, down under the clouds. 
Oh, no! cried the Admiral of Heaven. He's quicker and stronger than before. Then there's only one answer, said the Emperor. Monkey, you must leave Heaven at once. What? said Monkey. Go back down to Earth? Yes. After all, you ate my peaches, cried the Emperor. But that's not everything. I'm going to put you under a mountain for five hundred years. And I'm going to put my seal on the mountain so you can't get out and run away. But how am I going to eat and drink? asked Monkey. You can have a helper. He can visit you every day, answered the Emperor. Goodbye, Monkey. Nearly five hundred years went past. Then one day, Buddha visited a holy woman in China. She was called Guan Yin. Guan Yin, said Buddha. I'm afraid for the people of China. They think more of earth than of heaven. That's true, answered Guan Yin. In India, there are many holy writings, said Buddha. These can help. You must find a young Chinese monk. He must go to India and bring back those holy writings. Very well, said Guan Yin. So Guan Yin visited an old Chinese monastery, and she found a young monk there. He was called Tripitaka. I need your help, said Guan Yin. You must go to India and bring back some holy writings to China. Tripitaka listened carefully. The road is going to be long, said Guan Yin, and there are many mountains, rivers, and angry demons between here and India. The young monk looked at his feet. So, Tripitaka, can you go to the west for me, and for Buddha? Asked Guan Yin. Chapter two: A horse and a headband. The young monk Tripitaka. Looked at the holy woman Guan Yin. Of course, I can go on this journey to the west, he said. But how can I fight against demons and go across rivers when there's only me? You're going to have three helpers, said Guan Yin. Where are they? Asked Tripitaka. You're going to meet them on the journey," said Guan Yin. "I'm sorry, but I can't tell you any more. And do I need to walk to India?" asked Tripitaka. "Oh no, I have a horse for you," smiled Guan Yin. And she brought a beautiful white horse from behind a tree. And here's one more thing," said the holy woman, and she gave a beautiful headband to Tripitaka. Ah, <gasps> what do I do with this? He asked her. You put it on someone's head, then. You say these holy words," answered Guan Yin, and she said the holy words. 
The headband then becomes very tight. Of course, the wearer is going to listen very carefully to you after that. Well, I'm not going to need the headband, said Tripitaka. But he put it in his bag. The next morning, Tripitaka got on his beautiful white horse. He left the monastery on the road to the west. After a week, Tripitaka was on a road near a tall mountain, when suddenly he heard some cries from behind a big black rock. The master's coming! The master's coming! The cries went. Tripitaka began to feel afraid. Soon. He met a very old man with a bottle of water and a bag of fruit in his hands. What's all that noise? Tripitaka asked. Those are the cries of Monkey, said the old man. The Emperor of Heaven put him under that mountain five hundred years ago. I give him something to eat and drink every day. My father, my grandfather, my grandfather's father, and his grandfather before him did this for many years before me. Monkey is waiting for someone, I think. Tripitaka went to the mountain, and he spoke to Monkey. I'm Tripitaka, the monk. You can go free, but you must become my helper, and come to India with me. We're going to find some holy writings there. Oh, so you're my master? Monkey said excitedly. The holy woman Guan Yin came and spoke to me about you. I need to go on the journey to the west and say sorry for taking those peaches from the Emperor of Heaven's garden. Take the Emperor's seal off this mountain, then I can get out of this rock. So Tripitaka took off the Emperor's seal. Monkey jumped out of the black rock. Wow! I'm free after five hundred years. He cried happily, and he began to run away. Monkey, come back! Said Tripitaka. I have something for you. And he took the headband out of his bag. What's that? Monkey asked, and he ran back. It's a wonderful headband, Tripitaka said. When you wear it, you can suddenly understand many things. Really? Said Monkey. I must put it on at once. He took the headband. And he put it on his head. Tripitaka said the holy words. The headband suddenly became very tight. Monkey began jumping up and down. <laughs> stop! Stop! He cried again and again, but the headband became tighter and tighter. I never want to run away again," cried Monkey. "I'm going to be your true helper, and journey to India and back with you." Tripitaka stopped saying the holy words, and Monkey began to feel better. "Thank you, Master," he said to the young monk. Please don't do that again. Can I take the headband off now? No, 
You must wear it all the time, Chipitaka said. With that on your head, you're not going to run away again. So Tripitaka, the white horse, and Monkey began their journey. They traveled across dark mountains and past big rocks on the long road to India. Tripitaka sat on his horse, and Monkey walked carefully in front. He moved his eyes quickly from left to right. He looked for demons and monsters behind every rock and tree. Early one morning, they arrived at a big river. The water in it was cold, and it ran past very quickly. Tripitaka got off his horse. Oh, how are we going to go across this, monkey? Tripitaka asked tiredly. Hmm, said monkey. I need to think about that for a minute, master. So Tripitaka and the horse waited next to the river. Suddenly, a blue water dragon with big, angry eyes jumped out of the river. It took Tripitaka's horse in its long white teeth. And it began to go down under the water. Stop! Tripitaka cried. But the big river dragon was fast and strong. It carried the horse down under the water in its mouth. Tripitaka sat down at the side of the river, and he put his head in his hands. Oh. How can I journey to India and back without a horse? <laughs> He cried. And what is the holy woman Guan Yin going to say when she learns about this? Chapter Three: The Dragon Prince and the Monster. I can help you, Master," Monkey told Tripitaka. He began calling the River Dragon. "Dragon, where are you?" he cried. "I want to talk to you." Soon the River Dragon put its head out of the water. "What do you want?" asked the Dragon. Just then, Monkey took the little staff from behind his ear and cried, "Change!" The staff became very big, and he quickly began hitting the dragon over the head with it. "You ate my master's horse!" he cried angrily. "So take that, and that, and that!" The strong river dragon soon went under the water again. Suddenly, the holy woman Guan Yin was with them. Wait! Put down that staff, monkey, and listen," she said. Monkey put the little staff behind his ear. "Thank you," smiled Guan Yin. Then she told Tripitaka, "That isn't a true river dragon. He's the Dragon Prince of Heaven. The Emperor put him here because he once said bad things to the Emperor's mother. The Prince cannot go back to Heaven before he carries a monk to India." And I'm that monk," 
said Tripitaka excitedly. Suddenly, the dragon's head came out of the water again. Are you talking about me? The dragon asked. Yes, dragon prince, Guan Yin said. But you forgot my words to you. You didn't tell this young monk your story when you first saw him. Why? She asked angrily. I was very hungry, answered the dragon. So I ate his horse first. My last dinner was weeks ago, you know. Well, now you can be Tripitaka's new horse, said Guan Yin. At once, she changed the dragon into a beautiful white horse. It went and stood near Tripitaka. Have a good journey, cried Guan Yin before she suddenly left. The three travelers stood near the river. They looked up and down it, but could see no ships. Its cold water flowed past very quickly. Well. We can't take a ship across, and we can't walk across," said Tripitaka. "Wait and see," cried Monkey, and he took the little staff from behind his ear. "Change," he cried, and the staff became very big and long. Monkey put the long staff across the river. Then he, Tripitaka, and the white horse walked over it, from this side of the river to that side. Once they were over, Monkey cried, "Change!" The staff became little once more, and Monkey put it back behind his ear. "Thanks, Monkey," said Tripitaka, and Monkey smiled. The next evening, the travelers were on the road when they saw a farm. It's late, Chipitaka said, and we need beds for the night. Let's ask the farmer. Near the farm, they met the farmer's son, Cao Xiai. Can we stay here? Chipitaka asked. No, sorry. Cao Xiai answered, "A monster lives in one of our farm buildings. We can't have visitors." "A monster?" asked Monkey. "Is that true?" "Yes, it's a terrible story." Cao Xiai said. "Three years ago, a young man came to work for my father, old Mister Cao." He was a good, strong worker, and at first everything went well. He often had dinner with us. He loved eating, and he became a friend to my sister. Her name's Blue Orchid. But after some months, this man began to change. His teeth became bigger. His eyes became angrier. And his hair became longer. His legs and arms became stronger too. One morning, he came to the house. When we opened the door, we suddenly understood all those changes. Our farm worker was now a monster. He ran away. But the next day, we couldn't find my sister. We called her again and again. After many hours, I heard a noise from one of the little buildings next to our farm. I called through the door. Blue Orchid, is that you? And I heard my sister call back. Yes, it's me. But now I'm the monster's prisoner, and I can't come out. 
This all happened six months ago. We don't see Blue Orchid now. We're afraid of that terrible monster. So we don't go near the building. What can we do? You need me to help you, Monkey cried. And he took out the staff from behind his ear. Now, where's your sister? He asked Cao Xiai. And they walked to the little farm building. Be careful, said Cao Xiai. There's a lot of muck on the ground here. Well, it is a farm after all, laughed Monkey. Blue Orchid, Cao Xiai called. There's someone here. His name's Monkey, and he can help you. Blue Orchid slowly opened the door. The monster isn't here now, she said. He usually comes at night. Quick, Blue Orchid, run to the farm with your brother, said Monkey. I'm going to wait here. Monkey went in. And waited quietly behind the door with his big staff. The monster came in late that evening, and Monkey jumped on his back and hit him on the head with the staff. Ouch! Cried the monster. Then he moved, and Monkey fell to the ground without his staff. The monster stood over Monkey. And looked down at him. Monkey looked up, and saw a long muck rake in the monster's hand. I'm going to kill you! Cried the monster angrily, and he brought the muck rake down on Monkey's head. The Man-Eating River Monster The monster hit Monkey on the head with his muckrake. For a second, Monkey didn't move. Then he suddenly jumped up. <laughs> you can't kill Monkey with your muck rake, he cried. The Emperor of Heaven once put me in a big oven for forty-nine days. Now my body is wonderfully strong, and I'm immortal. The monster looked carefully at Monkey's face. I remember you," said the monster slowly. "You ate all the peaches in the emperor's peach garden. I was the admiral of heaven then. Ah,、oh, yes, I remember you. But what are you doing down here on Earth?" asked Monkey. It's a long story," <laughs> the monster said. "The emperor was angry with me because I became very good friends with the moon goddess. So I was born again here on Earth in this monster's body. <laughs> well, I'm on a journey to India now," said Monkey. I need to say sorry for eating all the Emperor of Heaven's peaches. I'm travelling with a monk on a white horse. What's that? A monk on a white horse? Cried the monster. Take me to him at once. Guan Yin visited me, and I know all about your journey. I need to go to India. And say sorry about the moon goddess, and for not being nice to Blue Orchid when she was my prisoner. 
So the monster went with Tripitaka, Monkey, and the horse on their journey to India. They called him Pigsy. When they all sat down for dinner that evening, Pigsy quickly ate everybody's food. Stop that! Cried Tripitaka. We need to eat too. I'm sorry, I forgot," said Pigsy with a red face. "Every time I see a lot of food, I want to eat it all." Some days later, the travelers came to a big river, the River of the Flowing Sand. They felt tired after the day's journey, and they all sat down quietly with their backs to the river. Suddenly, there was a terrible noise from the water. The travelers quickly looked behind them. Ugh! Cried Tripitaka. What a terrible thing! From the water, an angry monster looked at them. It had green eyes and yellow teeth, and it was very tall. In one of its thin arms. There was a long spade, and it had a big water bottle at its side. Stand back, everybody! It's a man-eater! Cried Pigsy. But I'm ready with my muckrake. Pigsy hit the river monster over the head, but Monkey wanted to fight too. He took out his staff and hit the monster with it. <laughs> River water went all over Tripitaka.、Oh, stop! cried Tripitaka. I don't like fighting. You know that. Pigsy stopped at once, but Monkey didn't stop hitting the river monster angrily. So, in the end, Tripitaka said the holy words. The headband at once became very tight on Monkey's head, and he stopped fighting too. The monster moved away and went under the water. Chipitaka began walking up and down. How are we going to go across the river with that monster in it? He said. Without fighting, who knows? Said Monkey angrily, and he walked away. But Pixy stood next to Tripitaka. It's all right, Master. Pixy said. I can help you. He jumped into the water. Then he went and found the monster on a big rock in the river. Wait! Don't hit me. I wasn't always a monster," the monster told Pigsy. "I was once the general of heaven." "I remember you," cried Pigsy. "I was once the admiral of heaven." "What are you doing here on earth?" "I broke the emperor of heaven's most expensive vase," said the monster. "So I was born again." Here in the river of the flowing sand, my name's Sandy now. Pixie looked carefully at Sandy. Don't tell me," he said. "You want to go with a young monk and his helpers on a journey to India? That's right," Sandy answered excitedly. Guan Yin spoke to me. I must make the journey to India and say sorry, because I broke that beautiful vase. Pigsy took Sandy to Tripitaka. Sandy sat on the ground in front of the young monk. Master, how can I begin to help you on your long and important journey? He asked. Take us. Across the river," answered Chipitaka. "Watch this," said Sandy. 
He quickly took his big water bottle in his hands, and he made a ship from it. Jump in, everybody! Cried Sandy. So they all went happily across the river in Sandy's water bottle ship. After that, the travellers journeyed for days. Monkey walked in front, always ready for demons and monsters. Next, there was Tripitaka on his white horse. Sandy came after Tripitaka, with his long spade in his hand. Last of all, there was Pigsy. He carried many of the travellers' things, and his muckrake too. They went through old villages, past little farms, and over cold mountains. One night, the travellers stopped at a monastery. Tripitaka was tired after a long day, and he went to bed early. He closed his eyes, and he soon slept. In his sleep, the young monk saw in front of him an old man with a terrible white face. There was water all over his hair and body. He came nearer. Oh, I am a king without a kingdom. He cried, "Please help me, Tripitaka." Chapter Five: The King in the Well. I once was the king of Cockadoodle," the old man told Tripitaka in his sleep. "That's a kingdom near here," and he began to tell Tripitaka his story. Five years ago, there was no water in my country. It never rained, and the farmers stopped bringing food into the towns. The people were hungry. And I needed to do something quickly. Then one day, a magician arrived. He could make clouds in the sky. The weather changed, and soon it rained every day. The farms were green again, and the people were happy. I told the magician, "Please stay. My kingdom is nothing without you." In the end. He said yes, and I gave him a house. But early one morning, I was at the well in the palace garden when I heard someone behind me. It was the magician. He hit me, and I fell down the well. Then he said some magic words. When I looked up, I could see his face far away, but it wasn't his face. It was my face. The magician was now me, and I could do nothing about it. The impostor put an apple tree over the well, and he went to live in the palace with my family. He is now the king of Cockadoodle, and nobody knows the true story. Tripitaka moved in his sleep. <sighs> How can I help? He asked. You must take this green ring with my seal on it. Answered the king. Give it to my son, the prince. When he sees it, he's going to understand. The next morning, Tripitaka opened his eyes in bed at the monastery. He saw the green ring in his hand. And he told Monkey about the King of Cockadoodle. Leave everything to me, Master," said Monkey. "I can help the King and drive away that impostor." Monkey soon learned something interesting. At ten o'clock the next day, 
The prince of Cockadoodle and his men wanted to visit the country near the monastery on their horses. The next morning, Monkey jumped on his white cloud. He looked for the prince and his men, and found them not far from the monastery. Monkey quickly changed into a big, fat bird, and ran in front of the horses. The prince suddenly saw the bird and thought, "Wow! I want to eat that for my dinner." <laughs> So he took a long arrow from his bag. The arrow went up through the sky, and it hit the big fat bird. Monkey, in the bird's body, went quickly across the sky to the monastery. Then he changed back into monkey, and put the arrow into the monastery door. Monkey then went into the monastery. And jumped into a box there. The prince went after the bird on his horse, with all his men behind him. He soon arrived at the monastery, and he found the arrow in the monastery door. What's my arrow doing there? He said. He took the arrow out of the door and walked into the building. But Tripitaka stood in front of him. Move! cried the prince angrily. I'm a holy monk. You can't say move to me," answered Tripitaka. Well, I'm the prince of Cockadoodle, and people always listen to me. The prince cried. Take that monk away," he said to his men. But Monkey opened the box and came out. He said some magic words, and suddenly nobody could move for a minute. Prince said, "Monkey, we have something interesting for you." Then he took the green seal ring from Tripitaka's hand and gave it to the prince. <gasps> That's my father's ring," the prince said. "Take it," Monkey said, "and close your eyes." The prince took the ring in his hand and closed his eyes. After some minutes, he opened his eyes again. "I saw my father," he cried. And he told me something terrible. The king, in the palace, is an impostor. He said, "Is it true?" "Yes," answered Monkey. "But what can I do about this?" The prince cried. "You must wait," said Monkey. We are going to help your father. So the prince waited at the monastery. Later that day, Monkey spoke to Pigsy. I need your help tonight," said Monkey. "Sorry, I'm feeling tired," answered Pigsy. Please help me, Pigsy," said Monkey. "Then you can have some treasure." Hmm," thought Pigsy. "Is that treasure going to be some nice food?" "All right, I can help you," he told Monkey. That night. They went to the palace garden. Pigsy broke open the gate with his long muck rake. Then they went in and found the apple tree. The treasure is under that tree, Pigsy," said Monkey. So Pigsy opened his big mouth, and he took away the tree in his teeth. Oh, look! 
There's a well under the tree. <laughs> Cried Pigsy. Yes, the treasure is down the well. Said Monkey. Shall I go down there and have a look? <laughs> Asked Pigsy excitedly. <laughs> yes. Said Monkey. So Pigsy went down the well. He found something in the dark well water. This is the treasure. Pigsy thought, and he carried it up to Monkey. Pigsy put the thing on the ground at Monkey's feet, and then he looked at it. Yuck! He said suddenly. That's not treasure. It's a dead body. That's right," said Monkey. "It's the body of the true king of Cockadoodle." And you knew that all the time," cried Pigsy angrily. <laughs> "Well, yes," smiled Monkey. "But I needed your help because you're very strong." I see," said Pigsy. "And now, don't tell me. I need to carry that body back to the monastery too." "No, that's all right," said Monkey. "I can do that." Monkey quickly took out some of his hairs and said some magic words. Hundreds of little monkeys ran to the dead body, and they carried it back to the monastery. The prince was there with Tripitaka and Sandy. At the monastery, the prince looked at his father's body. This is terrible, he cried. My father is dead, and that imposter is now. King, wait here," said Monkey. "I need to ask for help from some of my friends in heaven." Monkey jumped on his cloud, went up to heaven, and spoke to the Moon Goddess. "Here, have this magic peach drink," she said. "It comes from the fruit in the peach garden of heaven. When someone drinks it." They become immortal. Monkey took the bottle, came back to Earth, and gave the magic peach drink to the king. The king slowly opened his eyes and looked at Tripitaka. Thank you, holy monk, he said. Don't thank me, answered Tripitaka. Thank monkey. And me, Pigsy said. I help too. Let's all go to the palace tomorrow, Monkey said. Then we can talk to that imposter. Tripitaka, Monkey, Pigsy, and Sandy took the true king to the palace the next day. He wore a big hat on his head. And nobody could see his face. At the palace door, Tripitaka spoke to one of the king's men. In the end, the travelers went in, and saw the impostor king. He looked down at the travelers and said, "Who are you, and what are you doing in my kingdom?" We're four travelers. On a long journey to India," said Tripitaka. "We're going to bring back holy writings." "Oh," said the impostor. "But who's that fifth man in the big hat behind you?" "He's a man with a terrible story," said Sandy. "Long ago, he was a king, but there was no rain in his kingdom." And his people were hungry. Then, one day, a magician arrived and made a rain cloud. You 
dirty monster! cried the imposter. Stop there! Just then, the true king took off his hat. You're not the king of Cockadoodle, he told the imposter. The imposter stood up angrily. He said some magic words, made a big black cloud in the sky, and jumped on it. <laughs> All right, so I'm not the king of Cockadoodle, he laughed coldly. But you're never going to take me alive. And with that, he left on the black cloud. Chapter 6 The Journey Home Nobody runs away from me, said Monkey. He jumped on his cloud and soon came back with the imposter. Who are you? cried the true king. Your dark side, said the imposter. My dark side? asked the king. Yes, answered the imposter. Some years ago. You forgot your people and became a bad king. The Emperor of Heaven saw this and was angry. So he brought out your bad side, me. The king thought carefully. Hmm, he said. Well, I'm sorry for that now. Then the imposter walked into the true king and was no longer there. The king called his men. Let's thank these travelers. Bring food. We must have a big dinner tonight. Yummy, said Pigsy hungrily. No, said Tripitaka. We can't stay any longer. We must travel west at once. Without dinner? cried Pigsy. Without dinner, said Tripitaka. Very well, said the king. He and the prince said goodbye to the travellers, and they left. After many months, the road west became very bad. We're never going to arrive, said Monkey angrily one evening. Oh, be quiet, said Sandy. Yes, said Pigsy. We're tired of listening to you, Monkey. The next morning, Tripitaka could not find Monkey. We can do without him, said Tripitaka. Let's go. Nobody saw Monkey all day. Late that afternoon, the three travellers arrived in a village. I'm going to look for food, said Pigsy. He walked away. Sandy, Tripitaka and the horse waited near the road. In the village, Pigsy walked past a big house. A beautiful young woman was at the gate. Can I help you, traveller? She asked. Hmm. My name's Pigsy. I'm looking for food. He smiled. My name's Lotus Flower, said the young woman. My family likes to help travellers. Come and meet my father. Okay, said Pigsy, and he went with her into the house. Suddenly, Lotus Flower changed into a white demon. Then a blue demon in blue armour came in. He had a knife in his hand. 
White demon laughed. We don't like to help travelers. We like to eat them. <laughs> Where's Pigsy? Sandy asked Tripitaka some time later. Let's look for him. They left the horse and walked into the village. Suddenly, they fell into a trap. Soon they saw the faces of two demons over them. <laughs> Laughed the demons. Your friend is ready for our dinner tomorrow. And now we're going to eat you too. Help! cried Tripitaka. Where's Monkey? That night, Monkey heard Tripitaka's cries in his sleep. My master needs me, he thought. Early next morning, he jumped on his cloud and travelled back along the road. At the village, he found Tripitaka's horse. With his quick red eyes, he saw the demons. They were near an open oven with long knives in their hands. Tripitaka, Pigsy and Sandy stood between them. Monkey moved nearer. He said some magic words and his cloud rained down on the oven. The demons looked up angrily and Monkey jumped down with his staff. <laughs> He hit the demons with it, and they ran away. Monkey looked at Tripitaka, Pigsy, and Sandy. They were tired and afraid. I left you, said Monkey. I'm sorry. Look, we're stronger when we're all here on the journey. I understand that now, answered Tripitaka. We need you with us, monkey. There are many more stories about the traveler's journey to the west. They went across mountains, rivers, and oceans, fell into many traps, and fought many demons and monsters. But in the end, they arrived at the holy mountain in India, Buddha's home. Tripitaka and his helpers went up to Buddha's holy palace. Tripitaka fell to the ground in front of Buddha. Monkey, Pigsy, Sandy and the white horse waited behind him. Uh, we come from China said Tripitaka. We want to bring back some of your holy writings for our people. Yes, Guan Yin told me about you, smiled Buddha. And he gave some beautiful scrolls to Tripitaka. Take these home with you, he said. Thank you, said Tripitaka. And they left. But early on their journey home, Monkey looked at the scrolls. Hey, there isn't any writing on them, he cried. So the travellers went back up the holy mountain and told Buddha. Ah, I wanted to test you, smiled Buddha. But you did well in the test. These are the true scrolls. This time, he gave them scrolls with writing on them, and the travellers began their journey home again. Soon after that, Guan Yin visited Buddha in India. Those travellers had a long journey here, she said. 
so I'm going to make a magic yellow cloud for them. It's going to take them back to China in eight days. Soon the travelers arrived home with the holy writings. They left these in a Chinese monastery. The scrolls helped the people of China to think more of heaven and to live better. Then the Emperor of Heaven took the travelers up to his kingdom over the clouds. They sat there in his palace. Thank you, the Emperor told Monkey, Pixie, Sandy, and the White Horse. You helped Tripitaka on his journey to India. You once did bad things, but these are all past. So now you can live in heaven. Pigsy and the White Horse, you can be altar boys. When food falls to the ground near any altars, you can eat it. Sandy, you can be master of the well of heaven. And Tripitaka and Monkey, you can be heaven's helpers of everyone on earth. Thank you, Holy Emperor! They all cried. <laughs>